and welcome back to the Medigap Show. I'm Holly Cohen, licensed agent and host of Medigap Show. Today we're embarking into the world of Medicare drug pricing. If you're concerned about the impact of prescription costs on Medicare beneficiaries, grab a comfortable seat and join me as we get into the insights about the Medicare drug price negotiation. For years, pharmaceutical giants, Big Pharma, have held the reins on drug prices, leaving millions of Medicare beneficiaries struggling to access necessary medications that they need. How will this directly impact you? Let's dive into an article about this now. Price Negotiation Program Could Affect Medicare Part D Beneficiaries by Mariana Sokal, September 8, 2023. After the recent announcement of the first 10 drugs selected for Medicare price negotiation, much has been discussed about the drugs that were selected and the magnitude of price decreases that can be achieved. Less attention has been given to what this all means for Medicare beneficiaries. The negotiation informed by confidential data from manufacturers and analysis by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services will result in a maximum fair price for each drug, which will be announced September 1st, 2024, and will take effect January 1, 2026. The Congressional Budget Office has estimated that the negotiations could save Medicare about $3.7 billion dollars in the first year and more than $98 billion by 2031. The 10 drugs selected in 2023 represent more than 20% of Medicare Part D's total annual spending on prescription drugs. But one thing is unclear, how much of these savings will be passed on to Medicare beneficiaries, either in the form of lower premiums or lower out-of-pocket costs? Changes in out-of-pocket costs will be determined by the cost sharing established by Medicare's benefit design. Lower drug prices have the greatest impact if beneficiaries are required to pay a percentage of the drug's cost as opposed to a fixed copayment in order to fill the prescription. In Medicare Part D, beneficiaries pay 100% of the drug cost when they are in the deductible phase. In 2023, the maximum deductible that Part D prescription drug plans may charge is $505. Many plans do not have a deductible. In the initial coverage phase, after the deductible is met, beneficiaries' cost-sharing requirements are determined by the prescription drug plan they choose. Usually, plans require that the beneficiaries pay a percentage coinsurance for specialty drugs, defined as those with 30-day costs of more than $830 in 2023. The maximum coinsurance that plans may charge for specialty drugs is 25%, which is 33% if the plan has no deductible. With the Part D redesign established by the Inflation Reduction Act, once the beneficiaries out of pocket spending on prescription drugs reaches $2,000, they will move from the initial coverage phase to the catastrophic coverage phase and will not pay anything out of pocket for their prescriptions until the end of the coverage year. For these beneficiaries, the $2,000 out-of-pocket maximum is the main benefit of the Inflation Reduction Act, not the lower prices for 10 drugs. It is estimated that less than 20% of beneficiaries will reach that $2,000 threshold. For the more than 80% of beneficiaries who do not reach the catastrophic threshold, the maximum fair price could bring significant savings through two main mechanisms. First, the maximum fair price may lower a drug's price below the threshold for a drug to be considered a specialty drug. In this case, the drug might be covered outside of the specialty tier and might be subject to a fixed copay. Fixed copays can bring certainty to Medicare beneficiaries, helping them plan their budget for the year and protecting them from surprise oscillations in the out-of-pocket costs if, for example, they need a greater quantity of the drug or if the price goes up, both of which can happen frequently. 
Second, the maximum fair price will be a transparent benchmark that will be publicly disclosed, making it very likely that it will serve as the basis for beneficiaries' coinsurance calculations and for them to know the percentage of the cost they are expected to pay. To lower the price of branded drugs, Medicare Part D prescription drug plans currently rely on negotiating drug rebates with the drug manufacturers in exchange for favorable coverage of manufacturers' products. Information on drug rebates is confidential, as they are considered a trade secret between manufacturers and prescription drug plans, as well as the pharmacy benefit managers that often negotiate on behalf of the prescription drug plan. This model requires that at the point of sale, the beneficiary should pay their out-of-pocket portion and the prescription drug plan should be billed and pay the remainder. The net price will be realized only when the manufacturer adjudicates all sales to the prescription drug plan in a certain applicable period, example, a quarter, applies agreed upon criteria and transfers the rebate money back to the plan. This calculation and these transactions are confidential and they occur long after the drug is dispensed. There is concern for some drugs the maximum fair price under the Medicare negotiations may not be significantly lowered than the net price currently obtained by the various Medicare Part D prescription drug plans. Even in this case, the maximum fair price will still benefit Medicare Part D beneficiaries because it will be transparent and publicly known, allowing for deductible and coinsurance payments to be calculated over the lower price that beneficiaries don't know their plans are already paying. However, price transparency could be an undesirable outcome for prescription drug plans and drug manufacturers. Transparent pricing will limit the ability of Medicare Part D prescription drug plans to shift costs to beneficiaries for the Medicare negotiated drugs. In the end, all Medicare beneficiaries enrolled in Part D could benefit from the price negotiations. Those who do not take any of the negotiated drugs can also benefit in the form of potentially lower premiums or through potential lower prices for drugs that are in the same therapeutic categories as the negotiated drugs and may have to lower prices to remain competitive. For beneficiaries taking a negotiated drug, a major clinical benefit is that all Medicare Part D prescription drug plans will now be required to cover all the negotiated drugs. This is in contrast to the current system where each prescription drug plan sets their own drug formulary and is up to the beneficiary and it is up to the beneficiary to identify whether the formulary includes the drugs they need. The question that will remain, however, is how plans will respond to the changes in coverage and in cost sharing that will be brought about by the negotiation program. Two main problem responses may negatively impact beneficiaries. If plans establish high barriers to access, which means prior authorization or step therapy requirements, or if the plans choose to require fixed copayments for the, for the negotiated drugs that are higher than what the coinsurance requirements would be under the maximum fair price. CMS, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid, must keep a close watch for both situations. Starting in 2026, CMS will continue negotiating prices for more drugs each year while maintaining the negotiated prices from the previous years. The goal is that by 2030, up to 80 Medicare drugs will have prices negotiated, delivering financial relief to many Medicare beneficiaries on very costly medications. Most monthly insulin expenses are limited to just $35, offering much needed support for diabetics. The act also makes recommended vaccines accessible to beneficiaries without any cost sharing. And there we are, a deep dive into the Medicare drug price negotiation. Remember, these reforms are designed to help you save money. 
making essential medications more accessible and affordable to Medicare beneficiaries. Stay informed, stay empowered, and until next time, as always, be well. Thank you.